Okay, so this is what we have done. Um, once you have this, if you linearize the S protein, the spike protein, linearize the protein, the protein can be divided into S1 and S2, you know, two parts. Those two parts, cleavage of those two parts are very important for all those own valid fibers, including H Euphorina is HA. HA must be cleaved into HA1, HA2. And uh, HRV, must, GP160, must be cleaved into GP120, GP41. So these cleavages are the prerequisite for the virus fusion and entry. And uh, S1 is known for the receptor binding. For some coronavirus like MHV, mouse hepatitis virus, they use the NTD, N terminal domain, to bind the receptor. Some coronavirus, like SARS, they use this one receptor by the domain to recognize or bind to the receptor. So when we first knew the uh, MERS, and then first thing we need to test whether or not it's NTD or RBD would be the uh, protein domain responsible for the binding. So what do we have done? This is the cell negative control. This is CD26 uh, six antibody that confirmed the cell we are using. You you know they express CD26. That's the MERS uh, receptor. So when then we uh, express the FC fusion S1 here, and then we, we show it's bound to this cell uh, surface. When you use the NTD, no binding. And then we use this RBD. So RBD, the green one, also bind. So that confirms that RBD is a real domain for the receptor binding of the MERS. So this shows for the, my lab, we mainly use two techniques, structural biology, crystallographer work, and also we start to do some single molecule cryem now. And uh, another one is by physical method, by immobilize one partner and flow through the, the other plasma uh, by using the uh, surface plasma resonance method, real-time binding. So you immobilize one molecule, uh, flow through the other one. For example, this one, we use the human ACE2, it's a SARS receptor. And you, you fix the ACE2 on the surface, you see SARS-RBD binding. It's a beautiful binding. That's your positive control. And this is a SARS-RBD doesn't bind to the CD26. That's another you know, good example, of negative control. Uh, Homo ACE2, no binding to MERS-RBD. Again, CD26 really bind to the MERS-RBD. That confirmed that interaction. We were lucky enough at that time, we got a crystal structure. So this is a RBD. This is a CD26 as a dimer expressed on the surface of the cell, monocytes and the T cells, all these cells and macrophages. So you can see this is the, you know, they bind each other. So I want to tell you even the structural biology, all this can help you to trace down the origin of the virus. So after that, one very big question would be like the SARS. Where is the SARS? Where does the SARS come from? Whenever you give a talk, why the SARS just disappear? So it's not disappear because SARS ha has not found a a good intermediate host, so they disappeared. So if they have a good intermediate host, they will stay. If they adapted to the human beings well, they will stay, like the seasonal flu. The seasonal flu always there because they already adapt to the human beings very well. So in this case, if MERS is a virus, it's a derived from bats, derived you know, through a dromedary as intermediate host, then you, the hypothesis would be you might find a MERS-like virus in the bats or in the intermediate host. That's our, our hypothesis. We are not doing for those hunting of the virus, but someone did the work also from Hong Kong's Kaiwa US group, and uh, they have some virus I want to show you. Take a look, what's the coronal? Coronavirus is the family coronavirus, and it's some family coronavirus, and uh, they have four genus. You, either one of the genus is called the beta coronavirus. They have four lineages, A, B, C, D. You know, the MHV, SARS, A, and B. MERS, you need to see, when you do the phylogenetic analysis, you will see in the MERS virus, there are some virus like uh, BAT, coronavirus at Hong Kong University 4. It's uh, by Patrick Wu and uh, K1. So they isolated the HKU4 virus. When you find MERS coronavirus so close, those virus so close, the question would be, will the BAT coronavirus HKU4 will also use the MERS receptor? That, if it does, that tells you the, the MERS virus, you know, from the receptor adaptation or receptor usage, the MERS, virus, the, the MERS virus must be from bats, you know, because you can't find the relatives uh, or ancestor in the bats. This is the hypothesis we've done. 
So cut the long story short, do a follow genetic analysis and the sequence alignment, you can see, you know, uh, HKU for MERS, they are very similar, even this DDC region, and they are closely related when do the, this sequence uh, uh, analysis. And long story short, again, uh, facts and staining, we confirm, like what we did with the MERS, they bind. And uh, as I said, we are using the biophysical method. What we did, we, we tried to use this uh, uh, bio, bio, biological method to confirm, you know, it's a bicol, they bind. We were lucky enough, again, we got the crystal structure. So HKU4, receptor binding domain, beautifully bind, bind to your um, CD26 or DPP4. And uh, want to move back. When you check this, this is the HKU uh, MERS by the CD26 with, you know, slow on and slow off. And ACE22 SARS RBD also slow on and slow off. When you can look at the HKU4, it's quick binding, very quick binding, and affinity very low. Uh, the difference is like 1,000 times. So they bound, but with a very low affinity. So why is that? Once you have the structure, you know, so easy for you to ask you, if you know the structure, compact structure, compare the pr protein. And amino acids, which amino acid might be responsible for this binding? So this is actually what we have done. If you look at closely the structure, you found two amino acids here, K and E, uh, 506 and 554, uh, very important for this interaction. Okay, do a mutation. So exactly what we have done, we did a mutation, and uh, the binding recovered 100 times. So that really tells you, because of the, this tells you the adaptation, you know. The HKU4 virus with those two amino acids, of course, is very complicated. Plus some, uh, some virus, if you have those, if you have had those amino acids muta mutated, like the uh, MERS, and then you might get the uh, HKU4 to bind to the uh, human receptor, could be a new um, uh, pathogen. So this is the, you know, one part of the story. As I mentioned, for all those virus, the S protein or a, a GP160 uh, or, you know, uh, HA or flu, you need efficient cleavage between the S protein between S1 and S2. This cleavage is very important. Then another factor would be because we are working on this protein. So is this uh, HKU4 also can be efficiently cleaved? So when we, we transfected, we did uh, HKU4, we didn't have this virus. It's a whole genome sequencing. Uh, the NGS result. We don't. We didn't. We don't have the virus itself. So when you express this protein, so the S protein is here. It's not efficiently cleaved at all. But MERS virus, you transfect into the uh, 293 T cells. You can see cleavage of this uh, S1. So beautiful cleavage. And then you do the pseudo typed virus. So this is the MERS beautifully, you know, entry. But the HK4 you couldn't. So then the the hypothesis would be, if you get the cleavage. Use it by using the enzyme to cleave this uh, S into S1, S2, will this was get you to the cell? Exactly what we have done. So, trypsin. This is the um, uncleaved S protein of the HKU4. If you use the trypsin, you will see you know, it can be cleaved. Of course, it's an enzyme. It's a protein with enzyme. If you digest too long time, the protein will be digested into fragments or eventually will be into amino acids. So exactly, you have to control the time. This is the time cost. You know, this is the trypsin concentrations, what we found, 10 microgram per meal, and it's the best. You know, otherwise, through the time, uh, they will uh, fragment it. So this is exactly, we know that when you use the trypsin at 10 microgram per meal, uh, and then you can see the dose-dependent recep receptor, de um, receptor mediated entry. So that confirms that efficient cleavage here is very important. So that's, again, so, it uh, can use the receptor as a MERS, but they need further adaptation or evolution to use, uh, really get into the human beings' uh, cells. Now, the flu is another example. Look at, take a look of the flu, see the receptor adaptation and evolution, binding. Um, flu, again, is an own viral virus. They have three own viral proteins. One is a trimeric HA hemagglutinin. The other one is a, a, a tetrameric neuraminidase. And then you have an M2. So I'm not talking anything about neuroremediation or M2, but I'm talking about this. This protein, the HA, is responsible for the receptor binding. You look at the HA, HA can be divided into two groups, group one and group two. Maybe another group, this is the bad derived viruses. I'm not talking touch anything about this, but focus on what we know for those two groups. We have 16 
uh, HAs. So they, they all they have different kind of receptor binding uh, 